Welcome to The Mischief. I'm Valen, and this is Mana and Artifice. Today we're going to be covering runesmithing, enchanting, and artifice. Alright, you might be wondering what in the world those things actually are. <laughs> Let me actually explain a little bit more. Runesmithing is basically the process of taking a bunch of tools and items and making yourself a template for runes. You can then take these runes on an anvil, a runic anvil in this case, and smash them into the uh, items of your choice. Or you can mana weave these rune, some of the, uh, the results into uh, items as well, making yourself different relics, which are basically uh, unique items that can be used to enhance yourself in many different ways. Um, and of course, this is kind of, they all kind of combine together in a really, really good way. So let's uh, start off, shall we? No, I don't think we will. In fact, I think I'm going to tell you a, a few small things uh, real quick before we actually jump into the meat and potatoes of this. One, I am going to definitely going to try and keep this as compact as possible, but uh, it may run long. So that being said, we're going to add in a little something extra. In the past, we did a whole bunch of, of spells, how you can, well, actually just one spell, how you can make spells. Now that you are tier two, according to your Oculus, please check out previous parts one and two of this series if you haven't already. Uh, if you uh, check out in here, you are now tier two, and you can do all sorts of things. Remember, you only need to do nine of the 11 tasks. You don't need to do all of them. So... What are we going to be doing in here? Uh, I've already pretty much described it, but you're going to start running out of space once you've started making spells and stuff. Um, like, I've got three spells right now. I've got Fling, I've got Light, and I've got Crystallize. And honestly, that's three spots in my inventory, plus I'm, I'm holding on to this Crystalline Cage from the Crystallize spell. Well, you're going to want to make a spell book. It's really simple, actually. You, there's no processes to go through. It's just crafting a few items. And then when you open it, so you just right clicking does nothing because it's trying to cast a spell that's in it. You want to sneak, right click, and then you have all these slots and openings for all the different spells you can store. You can actually store tons of them over here, but you can only have eight of them active at a time. So if I take my crystallized spell, my light spell, and my fling spell, put them over here, I can now cast all three of them, not at once, no. Uh, but by default, the key binding is the letter Z, and it brings up this little uh, wheel, which I really appreciate, because honestly, having a, a button for each different one would, would be too much. But you can therefore choose each one according to the order that they're in. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight. Yeah, so pretty much that order. So if you know about where it is, you can often just kind of hover in that area to find out the one you want. In this case, self-fling. And being tier 2, just know that level 30 is your maximum level for tier 2. And as you can see in here, there we go, reach magic level 30. That means that uh, I've already meet, met one of my things. All I really did, I just I spammed it in a corner. But I mean, you can do all sorts of other things. Uh, looking in here, there's going to be some other stuff. You'll notice the rote information in here, meaning in the previous version, I told you these are things that I cast often enough that I have now memorized it. That will be key much later on in this episode. We're, we're definitely going to show you how you can customize your spells. But real quick, you can actually customize them somewhat in your inscription table. If you look here, I have a, a tier 2 spell that I'm currently making. That's right, it uses fire. Why do we care about fire? Because now we can add in modifiers. There are several new items in here, but you can really read them, uh, read about them in your Codex Arcana. I mean, leap, it makes you jump farther or your target jump farther. Uh, you, you've got slow, it slows down enemies. Transitory tile, you can make fake blocks in, in the world. Uh, gravity well, it allows you to basically, your, you or your target will suddenly fall quickly. Um, Entangle will pretty much root a target in place activate it it redstone activates something poison it poisons it you know you get the idea those are the things but we've got these now range it will change the range of the spell not the range of your casting distance per se it depends on what you're using uh so in this case i've got touch and you can see that i actually have four blocks instead of the default three i can increase and decrease this to my liking up to a certain limit for each of these so just by having range in there and damage i can actually increase my standard fire spell from five damage i went all the way up to nine now why have i chosen these here 
because my complexity maxes out at 40 being a tier 2 uh, caster right now. So therefore, I, I really want to get my levels up higher. But this is a really good way of uh, showing you how you can do stuff. There's also speed and delay. Delay is really going to be key when you're combining spells in your rote book later on. It will allow you to cast a spell, then immediately cast a second one afterwards, because sometimes when you're trying to do damage to something and you stack them together, it, because of Minecraft mechanics, it won't let you. So therefore, you need a short delay before the second blast hits, or, or just a certain chain of events. In this case, I've added range so that I can actually uh, touch a target that within four blocks instead of three. And I do 9 damage instead of 5 with fire. And of course they burn for up to 3 seconds. And that maxes out the complexity. Now I'm in creative so it's automatically going to make this. Otherwise it would create a vellum paper you know, like this uh, with the recipe. I'd place it down on a bunch of uh, runes. And we'd go through the ritual and casting and all that stuff to make it into a scroll. And then I could sneak right click and put it in my book. Well, in this case, I, ju I just kind of made it. And it doesn't actually register in here because I'm in creative. I'd actually have to go through the means of doing so in order for that to register. But now if I go with this, I can choose here. I now have a fire spell that I can light things on fire, attack enemies with, and so on. And it's really, really cool. Now, with this being said, I made a fire spell without actually covering something in here that's confusing. There's this orange ingot. Wait, when, when did orange ingots get in here? Is that a whole new alloy or something? Not really. It's just heated. We've, we've actually got a few things that I need to show you briefly. A Vintium ingot that you made previously, if you put it in a rune forge, it then becomes a superheated Vintium ingot. It will take a little bit of time to do so. Same thing with purified Vintium ingots, which, you know, you just wrap some purified Vintium dust around an iron ingot. Or, or rather one of those ingots over there. And you put it in here, you'll get a superheated version. And then, uh, this is something that's also going to be important. An unfired rune plate can be turned into a rune pattern in here. And an unfired rune plate is just a bunch of clay around some, some color of glyph, whether, you know, mundane or otherwise, which is just a bunch more stone. Uh, you put it in here and you end up getting one of these, a rune pattern. So there we go. I'll put it in there and it's going to start smelting it up. It'll take a little bit of time and it'll be done. Now, what do you do with these, the rune patterns? This is where we're actually getting into the meat and potatoes, people. We're actually starting to get into runesmithing. To start this process, you're going to need several materials. You're going to need a rune scribing table. You're probably going to need a runic anvil, which uh, I think we've covered the, the table before in the very first episode. It's just made like this, you know, basically this little 3x3 three three area here. And the runic anvil is made in a similar manner. Uh, obviously, it requires an anvil, and a little bit extra uh, ingredients. You're also going to need a runesmith's hammer and a runesmith's chisel, as well as a bunch of these rune patterns. You're going to want to make a whole bunch of these, so just gather yourself a whole bunch of clay. It's really going to help you out. You're going to need it. Uh, but you open this up. It's got a UI. You can see here it's got a little image for the hammer. Pretty darn intuitive. A runesmith's chisel. There you go. And you probably want to have a second runesmith's hammer. Uh, how are these made? They're just made with some Vintium ingots and sticks. Uh, there's nothing really fancy about them in this case. But you're going to want another one for when you're forging things so that you don't have to take it out of here. Now, you can take it out of here and use it instead, but uh, it's just going to make it easier. In fact, I'll even put one there for now. We can just right-click on there, and it'll stay for later use. So once we've got this in here, we'll put a rune pattern in place. There you go. Done. You've, you've accomplished rune scribing. Well... Kind of. Um, let me show you a little something. There are shortcuts to help make this a little bit easier. If you recall, uh, there are villagers in the world. Let's actually do this. We'll spawn this guy here that's going to make lots of loud noises with his droopy nose. When you click on here, he's selling rune scribing recipes. Oh, actually, that's the perfect one that I needed. Uh, the ritual metal. And I'm going to need a few emeralds. Uh, I wonder where I'm going to get some of these from. I, I have no idea. So let's give him an emerald. Thank you. And we're going to take this pattern. Yeah, you enjoy yourself over there. And we're going to actually put this in the table. Now, putting this in the table gives you an example to follow. Now, you don't have to have these. These are more going to be used for constructs that are automatically going to be able to produce these things for you. But 
it doesn't hurt to have these early on if you do find it. Like I got really lucky with that guy uh, having this, the one that I wanted in this case. But there are others that you can go for as well. Uh, you can always open your book and you can go to runesmithing and you can look up whatever it is that you want to make. In this case, we're actually going to make a mundane ring. Um, uh, you know, you could do this and then you could pin it up on the side and start chipping away one of those. Alternately, uh, we could go for the metal rune. Look at this. This looks very familiar. It tells you a little bit about how to do this, but we're going to we're going to pin this one up here. So in in this case, we we don't need this because we've got it over here. But you have it either way. Remember, this is going to more be used for automation. This is just for your own reference, but they both can be used for your own reference. So, how do you how do you chip away on here? It, just by hovering the mouse, you notice all sorts of weird little designs happening underneath my pointer. So, if I try and line this up with about where it looks right there you go you can see the durability is starting to be used on these you can just left click and it will start chipping away little patterns in here let's see do i want to go that far down i think i do that looks about right and then i want to go kind of here ish and then here now remember you make a mistake it's permanent <laughs> so you you then have to throw this away if it's uh, not going to match any patterns in the future but if you get it right there you go. It now is a rune pattern for ritual metal. Now, if I want to have more of these, I can just put a new blank one in there and I can continue on with whatever else it is. In this case, I could I could do the uh, this one with the ring, uh, you know, which I, I'm not going to do it, but it because it, it's a, a lot longer to do that one. But it, it basically will look like this once it's done. And you can use these in multiple ways. Now, to start with, you're probably going to want the, your your runic anvil here with your runesmith's hammer and such you can take the item that you want we're going to use the rune pattern ritual metal we're going to pop that on here now what do we do with it we need to put a superheated ingot on it in fact i've got one right here don't ask me how i got it it just appeared in my hand i just put it in place and you know that something is compatible when this happens if it's not compatible by the way just right clicking you take the item back into your hand if it's not compatible like this and then you try smacking it with a hammer, things will just pop off of the hammer. No, no damage will actually be done. So you don't need to worry about it too much. And the only reason it duplicated those is because I'm in creative. It is not a duping mechanic that's in game. Anyway, let's do this properly. We're going to put one of these down. We're going to put a superheated Vintium ingot on top. And you start seeing the runes appear at the bottom. And you just need to smack it. You can just hold right click or you can time it if you want. But basically, you need to aim at the the bounding box, not at the actual anvil up here. I just did that a moment ago and I broke the grass behind it. But if you aim at the bounding box on the top, you'll start smashing this this superheated ingot into that. There we go. Making ta -da, a rune ritual metal. All right. So I now have this weird T-shaped piece of metal. What do I do with it? Well, there's tons of things you can do with it. But if you have a whole bunch of them, you can use them to draw more permanent items. Remember before we needed uh, wizard chalk. Let's actually grab some of this so you can see. Uh, to make runes on the ground. Well, this is a more permanent version. The uh, you're, you're using ritual metal pieces instead. So once the rune is, uh, once the, uh, the ritual is complete, you can then use these, which I'm in creative, so I'm actually destroying these. Otherwise you would normally get them back. The chalk you do not get back and that has a durability on the chalk itself but uh, these will allow you to reuse them regularly if you build yourself some constructs you could feasibly have them just make a whole bunch of them for you now the problem is though with these is that they do not work with ritual kits you have to use the wizard chalk for ritual kits because those are used for like quick teleportation or or sort of like changing it to day or night or whatever like that things that you can leave the stuff impressed on the ground and it'll get used up when it's done that's what ritual kits are for a quick use it and forget it item if you use the rune ritual metal items they're used for more permanent things you can always pick them back up just by kind of you know punching them with your fists or breaking them with a pick and then replacing them but they're not intended to be used with the kits all right and that is me finishing making one of these here a rune pattern marking which 
we're going to probably need a few of these in the future. These are going to be very important as well. Now that you know what the uh, metal ritual patterns are for, which, by the way, those get used up when you make these things. So this is why you're probably going to want to make a whole bunch of them and get a lot of clay. <laughs> but uh, the, the result is then reusable. So that's kind of cool. But if you want to actually make some items, let, let's actually make something a little bit more interesting. I'm sure that uh, many of you have been interested in doing something a little bit more like uh, touch and then break, and then you just ended up making a spell like that in some way, shape, or form so that you could feasibly use it to, you know, mine things. But then when you got to something that was rather difficult to mine, like obsidian, for example, you tried mining it and you found... You found yourself lacking, or, or even better. <laughs> let, let me grab some redstone here. I'll put this down, and I try using this, and it, it just lights it up. Well, don't be afraid to sneak and right-click, and then it'll try to break it, but it's still not enough. Your, your break spell is only as good as a stone pick. You're going to want to enhance that a little further. How can you do that? Well, break rings. These things are fabulous. So let's actually make ourselves one of these things, and you'll probably understand a little bit better how you can make some artifacts or enchanted items that can empower you. Well, first, we make one of those mundane ring patterns, which you probably get the idea on how to do that here. You can just look it up in the, the Codex Arcana. If you want, you can do like a little search for it down here, and you can find things under mundane ring, which is pretty darn useful. Just know that most of the things are probably going to be under runesmithing, artifice, or enchantments for today. Now, if you put this down in place, you then, as before, want to take yourself a superheated Vintium ingot, put it in place, and bang away on the darn thing. There we go. I now have a ring. A mundane ring, to be exact. I actually already had one in my inventory. Let's put that back down. So what do we do with this mundane ring? Under Artifice, you'll find Rings of Breaking. There's also Rings of Silk, which gives you Silk Touch. Rings of Breaking, which upgrade your uh, Breaking Spells ability. Rings of Fortune, which can also increase the amount of drops from breaking things, uh, just like a Fortune enchantment on a pick. Um, and then there's Slipstream Generators, which we'll cover probably at the end of the episode. But Rings of Breaking. Once you make one of these things, you're not going to want to go back. So you can make one that will upgrade it to an iron pick, which just requires some iron ingots and vintium dust, plus that mundane ring that you just made. We'll make one of those. Or you can go for the greater break ring instead, which requires three diamonds, vintium dust, and a mundane ring. This is the one that we're actually going to go for in this case. So let's give it a try, shall we? All right, on the top left, I have pinned the recipe. And, of course, I have over here my usual mana-weaving altar, an annoying villager, and all of the ingredients. I put the ingredients in by just simply right-clicking them in place. One, two, three, and one of these. I'm in creative, so they just get duped in my inventory. And then you need to cast over the altar. Now, I found a few shortcuts on how best you can use it. Now, you'll notice that on the farthest point over here, it is kind of like a diagonal diamond or, or a, a square that's on its side. Um, in order to easier cast these things, you basically want to stop whenever you get to a corner. So like this, I stop, I stop, I stop, and I stop. And it, it, I found that that works really well, especially if you're doing the octagon shape. Don't do it as a circle like I was doing. Try it actually as an octagon, and it works pretty darn good. Now, a square, I stopped at the corner, I stopped again, and I go up. There you go. And it recognizes things a lot easier. If you stop at every location that has a corner, it makes it a lot easier for it to recognize. And then it will start making the item magically. Or, of course, you can always use your Mana Weave projectors and get yourself some items from trading. If I click on here, I now have a greater, or a break ring, greater break ring, excuse me. By opening up my Curio uh, slot here, I can then put it in place here. And now, when I use my break spell, which, by the way, yep, this is I'm breaking using that to break things, Again, right-clicking redstone will just activate it first. You need to sneak, and then it'll break it. And now, because it's diamond level, it instantly will break obsidian, making it even better than a regular diamond pick. It's awesome. And then you can all you have space in your curios 
Oh, look at this for a second ring. Oh, let, let's see what other rings we could potentially get here. Oh, look, a ring of minor fortune. Sounds perfect. Or a ring of silk. Uh, therefore, I could go with silk touch instead of that. And then I could break things and get silk touch. Therefore, allowing me, you know, get grass blocks or, or who knows what. It's just really, really good. Now that's not all. That's just me introducing you to some of the artifact items. There's plenty more to go, including how you can enhance your armor uh, as but with runes and such. So if I were to take this rune pattern aura and use it to make the rune aura, essentially same as before, I put this in place. Actually, let me take the hammer back first. Put this in place. I then put a superheated ingot on top of it. I smash it with a hammer. I get the rune off of the uh, anvil here, there we go, and I can either enchant this in some way with potentially existing books that you may have found in the world. It's possible you could find these looted. If that's the case, let me actually get a second one of these just for this demonstration. I put this in place, and then I grab one of these books, a Miner's Aura book. You can actually put the book on top, and then you can bang that magic book into this with no cost to XP or anything. It just enchants that rune. And now I have a rune aura, miner's aura. This is going to be useful in a moment. I will show you the more traditional way of making this effect without finding a looted book in the world. All right, under the enchantments chapter, you have mana weave enchanting, rune forge enchanting, and the different auras that I've been discussing. If you are interested in, let's go with the aura of jumping in this case. You then click over here, it tells you a little bit about it, but you'd get these ingredients, sugar, slime ball, tarma root, rune, of, rune aura, which I have one that's blank, it has not been enchanted, and a moat of air. Now, getting moats is going to be a little bit more interesting, but let's actually get there one part at a time. Going back to the rituals chapter, you'll find a moats chapter. Click on here and you'll get a really quick, down and dirty access to all the different moats that you can make. Ritual of the Endless Void, Ritual of Forgotten Lore, Untamed Wind. Oh, that sounds familiar, like a wind moat, perhaps? Yep, and due to a slight bug, the uh, the little X's are over top of the ingredients in this current version, but it will likely change in future ones. But you basically get Cereblossom infused silk, firework rockets, and feathers, for the most part, in this type of pattern, and you then make one of those moats using a ritual. Now, if you want, you can actually use a whole bunch of these uh, ritual metal ones in place uh, of, of the uh, chalk and therefore you can reuse them at your leisure. In the best interest of time, as I've shown you this before on how to do rituals, I'm just going to take one from the uh, creative inventory and use it here. Alright, I've got all the other ingredients now to just add my aura rune to the mix and then of course I need to use my mana waiver's wand by drawing the different uh, designs as it is so that it can hopefully recognize and start making this. Oh, we've got one It's a little bit different than usual. And there we go. Oh, it wasn't recognized. Yeah, see, I went a little bit too fast. I need to stop at the corners. And it makes it a lot easier for it to recognize what's going on. There we go. And we now have an enchanted rune, Aura of Leaps and Bounds, which then we can add to any chest plate. Any of these uh, Aura runes can be added to a chest plate piece of armor. Yes, I'm just going to use some iron in this case. Let me grab uh, iron chest plate, and we're going to put it on here. And then we're going to take this aura of leaps and bounds, put it on there, and then as before, we're going to take our hammer, and we're going to bang in here. Now, while this is being applied to this armor, keep in mind it can't already be enchanted. This is just a single enchantment uh, effect in this case. But once you take it, you put it on, you get yourself a much more effective thing here. Jump boost six, in fact. Now, yes, your jumps are super high. Let me actually take this thing off the side. There we go, that's better. Now, yes, your jumps are super high. This is this is the, the minimum jump that I can do right now. But you do need to be careful of fall damage. Uh, anything further than the usual amount below what I would jump, like landing down here, I, I might take a little bit of damage. But you move really fast while you're going with this so it's pretty darn effective each one has a different effect and you give off an aura of a few blocks around yourself to friendly players so if you have others nearby that are using different runes on their 
chess plates, you can actually have like a team party effect going on where everyone is giving each other buffs and bonuses. Uh, just know that, you know, if you're jumping around one direction, someone's jumping the other direction, they might uh, get far enough away from you before this thing can refresh, before, uh, you know, you, get, you can gain the benefits of that. But it's really cool how you can give off a friendly aura to that. It doesn't really work on uh, farm animals or anything, but it should work with other players. Okay, so we're going to be covering a couple more rituals uh, before we proceed, and one of which is going to use some of the items that I just demonstrated, specifically the Rune of Marking and how it can be used. Now, it has multiple uses, but this is just going to be one of them. In the Rituals section, we're going to be looking under here for the Ritual of the Flatlands. Now, this is basically going to take place of a break spell, but in a much larger area. Um, once you've maxed out or gotten some really high levels of, of this mod, you, you probably wouldn't need this, but currently it's just a really good way of carving out a large area. Uh, now there is a certain ritual area effect here that I already have set up, uh, and the only thing is you're going to probably want to take this. It's, it's basically a really big area, but it's, it's not that bad. I mean, you just take some of these rune markings here. Let's see. And I have too many of them. I only need two. What you're going to need to do is find a spot that you need to dig out, whether it be dirt, stone, trees, whatever. This this hill here looks perfect. I'm going to choose a bottom corner right here, and I'm just right-clicking with this, and it is now glowing. If you look, it actually has a position. Now if I take this other one, so with my, my super jump now, I can actually get up pretty darn high. It took me a few seconds, but you can see that I am now up here. And I can choose this block up here. I'm not going to get the very tips of this tree, but that's fine. I'm just using this for demonstration to show you guys. And if you want to see the area that you just highlighted and selected and what, what is currently being affected, put one of these in one hand, and the other in the other hand, and then it shows you the shape area that it's going to carve out slowly over time. If you're successful in actually setting up this ritual. So if you have all the things in place, oh wait, there's a new item here that I have no idea what it is. Well, let's take a look at that real quick. It is this, the Book of the Flatlands, which is just a, a diamond pickaxe, a mode of earth, and a book. And you, you get one of these things. Remember, most of the time you, you should get your items back from these rituals, but it will take a little bit of time to actually carve it out. It's not instantaneous. Uh, so you will get the results from this as well. And there are limitations. I think it's like up to 48 blocks. Uh, is about as much as you could probably do. And I don't mean like total. I mean like in a, in a range, like uh, your your distance that you need, you can go with these things. But for now, I've got all the ingredients here except for the runes of marking. Let's put one here and one here. Because I'm in creative mode, I just duplicated them. But I just need a little bit of purified Vintium. And it should tell me, the first click tells me these are all the items you need. Second click will actually verify if they're in the right place, which in this case they're not. That's kind of awkward because those should recognize, but that's okay. There we go. Oh, it's uh, it's because I got it flipped top to bottom. Doesn't matter. Let's just click again. And then once the ritual is complete, you'll start seeing some special effects of items uh, you know, happening. But of course, there is a little bit of mana weaving still needed to happen. And there we go, and now you'll start seeing some little puffs of air going up. And this has to be in a nearby area. Obviously, I'm, it's not a problem for me. And you'll start seeing them eventually make their way over here. And, yep, these little, little puffs of air are actually going to be your diggers. They're your digging minions. They will start clearing out the entire area that you had highlighted. Just know that when you see these little puffs in the air, that it's still doing, it's still doing the work. I can even hear it still chopping away. Yeah, there we go. See, it, it's doing it. It just has to go from bottom to top, clear across, bottom to top, clear across, and so on. And it'll keep doing this provided the area, you know, has something keeping it loaded, which I'm, I'm not that far away from this to happen. And you'll notice that the book is still left intact. So this did cost a little bit of Vintium and some stone tools, uh, and of course the, uh, the, the runes of marking, but at least you get the book back. Now the other ritual that I'm going to be showing you, if you go into the rituals chapter and you actually click on the next page, is the ritual of locating. This one I anticipate will be changing how it's performed or how you obtain some of the materials for it in a future version, but just know that currently 
Uh, you will need access to a cartographer villager, which you just put down a cartography table, and you just keep on replacing it until you end up getting what you want. <laughs> or you could try buying a bunch of them. But in this case, I wanted to find the council library, and he, he is providing uh, one emerald for one of these. So let's let's actually get this. I want one of these, and thank you very much. That's going to level him up, of course, and he's going to start... Uh, selling off some other st things as well and, and of course it still does the vanilla stuff and this gets me a thaumaturgic link you're going to need this for this recipe you look in the codex arcana when you click here there's actually a certain ritual what this does is similar to some mods that i've seen before uh specifically nature's compass uh it, it's similar to that function if you've ever used that mod before if not then it's basically using the locate command for structures and items but I currently have this set up, Arcane Ash, uh, the Thaumaturgic Link of choice. This is what you're trying to find, and a regular compass. Uh, now, in this case, it says Thaumaturgic Compass, but, uh, I mean, there's, there's no other way of getting them, to my knowledge. I just have a regular compass up here. And if I put down this Thaumaturgic Link, there we go, which, of course, I'm in, you know, creative, so it, it does the, the thing like it should be. Everything's good here, and I just use a little bit of this... Yep, it says it knows what it's looking for, but it should probably work still, even though these aren't at the exact locations that it's saying. Yeah, it's going to want me to move them. There we go. I guess this one needs to be facing a specific direction, which makes sense considering that it is like a north, south, east, west type item. Take my purified Vintium dust, click on here, and it is complete. does a really neat little design. Once you're done with your simple mana weave, which is just a single pattern, you get an enchanted compass, a thaumaturgic compass, which will point in the direction of a specific item. Now, in this case, let us uh, let me let me see here. I have a council is currently set to the letter C. This is uh, the Zero's minimap, if you're curious. And it is currently in that direction, and that is where this, this compass is pointing. And it will lead you to these structures or biomes of your choice uh, that this guy currently can do. Uh, or, you know, in future versions that may change, but uh, just know that that's the basic idea. You're enchanting a, a, a compass to show you where this item, place, structure, biome, whatever, is currently located at. And then you can go and find it that way. All right, so let's get into a few more artifacts, and then we'll, we'll finish up with the Book of Rote, which is going to be quite possibly the best thing that you that you found actually we'll we'll do one last ritual set after that as well but uh some some last items that you might be interested in under mana weaving you might find warding candles these pretty much will prevent uh mobs from spawning uh in a 32 block radius doesn't mean that the mobs can't enter that area it just means that they will stop being spawned in that area so you don't need to worry about uh you know things uh, spawning in next to your bed while you're trying to do a snooze. But uh, it's just a little bit of stuff on the Mana Weave Altar with an octagon shape here. I keep calling it a circle, but honestly, it is an octagon because the, the corners have proven me otherwise. Uh, you put one of these down, and then you just light it with a flint and steel, just like so. And then while it's lit, you know that it's good to go. You can always just right-click to turn it off, and then it'll work again. And if you're using any kind of spells or things that may summon creatures in the area of this, just know that they, they might not work, uh, because because this is in effect. I found this out the hard way multiple times. I kept forgetting that I had one of these things around, and I would cast spells or summon creatures, and they just wouldn't exist. And, well, that's the problem. Uh, all you need to do, though, just right-click, extinguish it, and you're good to go. Speaking of casting spells and trying to level yourself up, well, there are ways of enhancing your spellcasting abilities so that it isn't quite so restrictive. I know that while I'm in, uh, you know, this, I may be level 30 right now, which is kind of kind of the maximum here. If I bring up this my spell book and I start using my my break spell uh, constantly. You know, just a few of these blocks, it's no problem. But if I use it on something a little bit uh, hardier like a stone, or I just start spamming it, my, my mana pretty much just will run out rather quickly. Often you're like, okay, I, I want to be able to cast this spell, but it's taking me forever for, for my mana to recharge. You know, re maybe something's going on. I don't know here. What? Why is it taking so long? It's a slow process sometimes, especially when your mana doesn't, you know, when you've got so much of it in the current state. So there are ways that you can enhance its regeneration as well uh, at home as well as on the go. 
and that is with mana crystals and mana crystal fragments. And this is under the Artifice chapter. We're also going to be covering the Crystal of Memories real briefly, too. Crystal of Memories, obviously you just need to, you know, cast a few things on your mana weaving altar. And you'll get one of these, a Crystal of Memories. I'm not going to actually make one you know how to mana weave by this point. If you don't, go back and look through the previous videos, because I've already covered it. But it, it's full with 20,000 XP. That's because I've already used it. You know, to to pretty much, I pulled it out of the creative inventory. But it, <laughs> you can use it to store or uh, replenish your XP. Currently, returning XP just by sneak clicking, and then you just right click. And you can, you know, fill it up or sneak click and change the mode, and you can take XP back out of it. It can store a lot of XP. I don't know if you know 20,000 X experience. That's a lot of XP. That being said, there are other crystals, the mana crystal fragment. Also under artifice is going to be the, is going to be that. And it is made with a bunch of the, the chimerite gems or, or chimerite, depending upon how you want to say it, uh, which hopefully if you're over level 20, you can start finding just by mining coal. Therefore, you have a, a good chance of finding those. So get your, your level up to 20 or more and then start mining coal and uh, it'll be the easiest way to do it. Otherwise, uh, you can still mine up diamonds and emeralds and you can start finding uh, chimerite gems. And then you make one of these. In fact, you're going to want to make several of them. <laughs> Why? Because uh, one of them has a use. Several of them actually have a use. And many of them will be used in a recipe. And that is making a mana crystal itself. Now, if you look here, it looks a bit chonkier. This here requires several of these. And in fact, they have to be full. What are mana crystal fragments? Well, let's see. You saw before I was uh, constantly casting, and it, it, it wasn't enough for me to keep up with just constantly breaking stone and such. Now, if I hold something that uses this, you can see my mana is still replenishing. This is currently says it's full, and it's set to infusion. If I sneak right-click, same as the other crystal, it will change to supplement, and it will therefore start infusing me if I hold it and right-click with even more mana. You notice my mana bar is going up really fast now much improved and then I can continue on with my previous you know endeavors to just destroy the earth now if I change this mode sneak right click and it is now on infusion and I right click it will drain my mana so therefore it is just a way that you're storing your existing mana for later use and you're gonna want to fill several of these in fact uh, eight of them total in order to make a full-on mana crystal now, once you've got this in place, you've made yourself a moat of magic. Once you've made one of these things, you put it down and you start looking at your mana itself and you'll get a mana regen three boost, which just increases the speed with which you regen your mana so that you don't really need to worry about it quite so much. And therefore you can start using stuff nearby. This is really good if you're trying to fill up a whole bunch of mana crystal fragments because, you know, you're, you're you change your mode and then you're you're trying to refill yourself that's one thing but if you're just trying to re replenish these things or fill them up because they haven't done it yet then this is just going to help you regen your mana nearby you do have to be within i don't know i think it's about like three blocks or something like that uh radius of it for it to actually function so you could just kind of you know put these dot these around your base but that is quite a lot of effort to do all right the last fun item we have is one of these a slipstream generator what the heck is that under artifice you'll find a slipstream generator with its recipe as such you'll need to make a mode of air have some phantom membrane and a feather and these things are really worthwhile you don't have to have four of them like i have here i just am doing it to show you that you, you can also put them next to each other and they'll cover themselves and a little bit beyond where they're at and essentially it depends on where you're looking while above or below these blocks. Now, if you look up, I currently have a few blocks set up up here. Basically, wherever a slipstream generator block is placed, up to 50 blocks above it and below it, uh, I believe that's the range at least, is affected by where you're looking. So if I stand on here and I'm looking perfectly level, not much happens. You know, I'm, I'm just, but you start seeing some wind coalescing around you or, or, or little air particles. When I look down, they start kind of like aiming downwards, as you can see this. When I start looking up, they'll start looking up and, oh my gosh, I'm floating. I'm being beamed up to another dimension. Uh, it's it's not that, really, really it's not. But it, it's just, it goes in the direction that you're looking. So if I want to go up, I look up. If I want to go down, I look, I look down. That's it. So what I'm recommending is that if you want to use this as an elevator, 
that you give yourself at least three blocks space. <laughs> and perhaps you color code just above them and below the block, you know, the, the floor, so that when you are actually trying to get there, like I'll try and get up to this, I can press forward and I can just, you know, get off at the stop that I want. Now, here's the other cool thing is that, yes, you are immune to fall damage while in the slipstream. So, therefore, you can go up quite high. Let's go all the way up to the top. There you go. Getting quite far up there. And then I can just look down. Back down to the bottom. So, if I stand underneath one, it works the same way. So, you don't even have to have the, one of these things at the bottom of your elevator shaft. You can have it at the top. You can start seeing the air particles again. As I'm looking down, it's trying to push me down. If I look up, ugh. I just bang into the ceiling and no damage is had. So it's just really good. And this, the angle that you look determines the speed that you go up. So if you just want to elevator going up nice and slow and easy, you can. If you want to go super quick and fast, you can do that too. And here we have it, finally, the Book of Rote, one of the best things in this mod. I'm going to show you how to make it. First you open it up. And you go into sorcery, of all things. And it's right here. There we go. Book of Rote. Spells and incantations give me the ability to cast spells following that exact recipe. Yep. This basically allows you to customize your spells on the go without having to keep recreating them once you've memorized how they are. So you'll have to have made three mundane rings, which we kind of showed you how to make some of this stuff earlier on in the video. Vellum, Arcanus ink, and a couple string, plus a whole series of symbols, which I already have done uh, all of them but one and i'm going to do this here and by the way you can also do the symbols first and then put the ingredients in if you want kind of makes things a little bit easier in some way shape or form but there we go and now i have a book of rote so if you go into your oculus here and you look to see any of these things that have a full green bar on your sorcery tab, those are things that you now know by memory and can use a book of rote to customize these spells without having to go through here and use all of these ingredients to make these different spells. I mean, look at this thing. This is ridiculous to do that just so you can change its uh, damage rating down by a half a point or something like that. I mean, that'd be a bit much. Well, that's what the book of rote does. You, you, you can just right click and magic happens. Well eventually. First you need to sneak right click and set things up. Anything that you currently have memorized by rote should be listed at the bottom. Now I currently have uh, several things going on here because I'm in creative and whatnot so things are not going to be the same. There we go. Now that I'm in survival mode as you can see here I only have four items listed. Touch, self, fling, and light which allows me to kind of customize a little bit of this stuff but not very much. If I put touch and I can put light, and, and I can also, you know, change it to, to lighting myself if I want, or, or flinging. It's, it's not very much. Yes, yeah, so you can put touch, light, fling. Wait a minute, what? This is a little bit different. This is how you can actually do things. Uh, let's make it touch. Every time that I touch something, I will light it up, and I will fling that item as well. It's kind of interesting this way. And if I had more options or customizations, I could add those in as well. You cannot go back to the same one. So if I click light a set, uh, like a, again, thinking that it'll cast another light, it doesn't. It, it will not work that way. You can only have one item in there. And these are the different ones that you can have. It's just like the spell book in this way. You can have up to eight of them. And if you're holding on to this, and you press Z just like before, you have your different magic spells. If it has not been specified, it'll just say magic spell. If you have specified it, it will say this. And it will actually tell you the complexity and the mana cost of the spell it's in charge of. So let's let's light you up and fling you. It doesn't work because you're a villager's dog on it. I just so happen to have a cow in my crystalline cage. So let's just use that on here. There's a cow and book of rote, go. It is now lit up. And I flung the cow. <laughs> and they're now glowing because of the uh, the light and enchantment that I had in this case. And you can see that it is using my mana a little bit at a time because it's not a very powerful spell. It doesn't use a lot of mana. And I can, I can use this. Now to give you an example, I am currently in creative. Let's open this up, go to the second page, and you can see that I have a ton of things uh, as an option in here. In fact, I'm going to go to another world where I have everything wrote. I did have everything set up in another world for this, but I, I forgot that I had changed my tier back to tier 2, so it didn't exactly work. 
Uh, now, currently I have everything set up here. You have your own rote book. You can make your own magic spells, customize them, uh, combine them together. And if you have something that does damage like fire and ice at the same time, you'll probably want to uh, add a duration, or not the duration, the um, the delay a little bit on there so that they don't hit at the same time. Let's get rid of these here. In fact, let's put fire in there. There we go. So if you've got the first one untouched doing damage of ice, then you want the, the next one to have a little bit of a delay before it activates. Otherwise, uh, you'll run into the Minecraft thing where you know you hit an entity too quickly and it doesn't register. So you want to do that. And then you'll still get the effects of both of these. You'll do 10 damage for 42 mana, which is pretty darn cool. <laughs> and don't worry, that, that wasn't too much of a damage bonus in it. But I had it still a little too close. Probably need to have it at least 1.0 for it to have done the proper damage. Seeing that I can spawn in cows, we can do this again. And there we go. You saw that that time I cast it once and the cow instantly died. Whereas before, it wasn't a big enough delay. And it just took the frost damage and then set the target on fire. But it didn't take any of the fire damage uh, on the instant hit of that item. So yeah, it's it's pretty cool how it works. And you can customize this quite a Quite a lot. A, a whole lot, in fact. And you just access it same as you would with the spell book, just by using the, the Z key by default and choosing the spell you want. All right, and I think this, there we go, should finish me with level tier two. I have two other options I did not do, but I will show you in a future episode when we cover constructs. But I can advance by choosing and completing one of the following rituals. Ritual of the Ancient Council, the Burning Hells, or of the Fairy Courts. Now each one of these is going to be different. They'll have different benefits and negatives. Specifically, it's going to be the, the spells you have access to, if you want to know. The Fairy Courts have this uh, kind of pink-haired character here. The Council has these hooded ones, and the demons have these little fiery dudes here. And when you uh, align yourself with one of these rituals, you will get attacks and attacked by all by the other factions basically if i choose to go with the fairy courts the ancient council and the burning hells um yeah the wizards and the demons will randomly teleport to you and start attacking you so be be prepared at any given time uh there isn't really much notice or anything like that they just could teleport and start attacking now what if you don't want to at this point in time there's no way of not choosing one so yeah and each one has their own way of actually uh, doing it. If you want, you go to the rituals here, then you can choose the ritual of the burning hells to summon a demon. Be aware that you will need a fire resistance potion to survive the uh, the contract, as well as you'll you'll need a moat of fire besides the one that's required for the, uh, the the ritual itself. Now, the ritual of the fairy courts. This one here, uh, you might need to you know pick up and place down a few things. A mode of air and on top of the one that's required for this uh, setup is a good idea as a gift for your fairy patron. And the ritual of the wizard's council, uh, this one here, just requires a lot of book stuff, a mode of magic. And uh, in my experience, I didn't actually have to give them a mode of magic, though I did have one on me just in case. Uh, you just need to be willing to step into the circle and uh, accept their blessing, or, or or will they kill you? Who knows? And these are really cool effects. I would show you some of these, but I don't want to spoil it because they are really cool effects. So if you're going to do these and you're on a server with friends, get some friends nearby so they can watch this stuff too because it's just really cool stuff. I, I love it. Anyway, um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. So be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, and uh, as always, be sure to come visit us on Twitch. Don't be afraid to spread the mischief to others, and uh, see you guys next time.